second home game of the young season for the Texas Longhorns. Today's game presented in FSN HD and all brought to you by Hitachi. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, back at Austin, and downstairs we go to Jim Knox with Mac Brown. Knoxy. Coach, one of the best matchups today has to be TCU's defense going against your offense. They have nine defensive rest returning starters, including Tommy Blake. What's going to be the, the keys for your offense getting in the end zone? Well, Jim, they do a great job with run blitzes that also pressure your quarterback. So we've got to do a super job of protecting so Coke can get the ball downfield. And you've got to make some rushing yards. Not many people have. It'll be tough, but we can't leave the running game. Best of luck, Coach. Thank, Thank you, Jim. All right, Jim. So almost 90,000 on hand for this first matchup between two old friends. First matchup, well, 1897. He's been dominant in recent years. And when I say recent years, a decade or more when they were back in the Southwest Conference, 27 to the 28, that's domination. And TCU trying to win for the first time in Austin since 1967. Warm one. But if ever there were two teams that are used to heat and humidity, it's the Horn Frogs and the Longhorns. Uh, there's no question about that, Joel. And, you know, when you look at it, the uh, TCU Horn Frogs, they had a better opener. You know, shutting out Baylor 27 nothing, as we talked about, Texas, they basically staggered a little bit in their opener. They got the victory, so it'll be interesting to see how these two football teams knock heads today. Hunter Lawrence, young man outside of San Antonio. Bernie, Texas gets into it. We're underway over to the near side. It's going to be brought back by Marcus Brock. Got a lane up the middle. Look out past the 30. Makes wow. a miss all the way across the 45 to the midfield strike. What a beginning. The ultimate for TCU. No question again in Brock, you know, the TCU's got great team speed. That's not a mismatch in this football game. And right here, special teams, the kicking game, the hidden yards, they're a, a valuable commodity in this football game. A great lane afforded to Brock. Tremendous blocking. And he just went north and south. He made a decision, planted that foot, get up the football field. Man, what a payoff that was on that kickoff team return, giving them a half the field to work with offensively. The single set in the backfield is Justin Watts. Injury to the starting tailback. Dalton hit as he gets rid of it, and it's off the fingertips of their tight end, and a very good one, Shea Reagan. Boy, the, the pressure's the reason that was an incompletion. Andy Dalton, and this young man has played in big games before. In fact, two state champion 5A games right here. So he's played before 40, 50,000 in Memorial Stadium in Austin for the state title out of Katy, a big school in well, Houston area's offensive high school player of the year just a couple of years ago. So these conditions, he should not be intimidated at all. Not at all. And, and Dwayne Aquina came with a, a double blitz from the backside to test the redshirt freshman quarterback right away. They're going to flow Jackson out of the back. He'll go the other way on the slip screen to the flanker. It's complete. Short yardage for Jimmy Young, the redshirt freshman of Monroe, Louisiana. They covered quickly. They're going to try to exploit that secondary. And Arkea Zara starting 11 offensively, the next 10 after Dalton. And the guys in front of him, Robert Newhouse's cousin Marshall on the left side, Linder, an all Mountain West guy last year. Watts gets the start. Massey, Brock, Dickers in the wideouts, and Shea Reagan, a very good tight end of a converted quarterback. Good athlete, 6'4, 260. Well, the opening minute of play and already he third down because of the field position third and seven too much time for Dalton and he throws it wide he was looking for Massey or Marcus Brock if the completion occurred I don't think it would have been a first down anyway because there was excellent coverage I think the tackle would have been executed by Palmer read the route very well broke on the football even if the ball is accurate the journey ends right there but every yard is precious and that's just a great job by the defense because of that kickoff return they were put under stress immediately they pulled their necks and they just hung in there tough made TCU go three and out so Derek Walsh on a lot earlier than he anticipated back deep Quan Cosby wide receiver and a very good one back at the 10 for the long arms a little pooch but Dead ball foul coming up. Little early start. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. John Bible, our referee, veteran of the Big 12. Well, this does not hurt TCU at all. The delay of game, a little more room to work with if he wants to angle it to the boundary and not kick it right at. 
Saquon Cosby. We're in a Keener right there next to Mac Brown. He's happy about his defensive stand. They were put under pressure, no question about it, with a magnificent kickoff return. His guys stood up to the task. One, two, three, and out. AM in overtime against Fresno State. And as he pooches it out of bounds, it'll go out close to the 20 of the market right at the 19. So that's the first possession of the game for the Longhorns. And their sensation from last year, quarterback Colt McCoy. And what a year. 29 touchdown passes. Ties an NCAA record for all freshmen. It broke the single season record, though. It was held by Vince Young. You know what impressed me most about Colt McCoy last year? 68%. Actually, over 68% completion percentage. That's extreme accuracy for a first-year starting quarterback. And his goal this year is to complete 70% or more. So first down outside of the 19. Minute six gone. Fake the reverse. Give it off. Charles battles. Not much. Two yards. That's it for the 21. Jamal Charles, a junior from Port Arthur. And up front some changes offensively on the offensive line because three guys left. Leilai, Sandlin, also stuttered. So when you talk to the offensive line, it's going to be a challenge. Tony Hills and Ulatoski, they're going to be under a microscope because of the defensive ends. Uh, the exceptional ones for TCU. Charles got the carry. See the wide receivers and Jermichael Finley, good target, the tie it in. And another athletic guy that we're talking about with Reagan for TCU. Blake is in the game right here. He starts the football game. Charles again battles his way across the 23, out to the 24. So now it's going to be the first third down of the game for Texas. They'll need about five, brought down by the backer in the middle. Josh Phillips, 4-2-5 defense. For TCU, the bookend, Ortiz and Tommy Blake. As good as it gets in Division I football. Guys that will be playing on Sundays down the road. The two linebackers, and you saw Phillips on that stop. And then they go with Bonner as their big play guy. The strong safety. You'll see them all over the field. So they do a 4-2-5. And let's see what happens now on a passing situation. With McCoy out of the gun for the first time. Here comes the heat, and he's hit as he released it. It's a fumble picked up out of the secondary, and bringing it up, the defensive back, Stephen Coleman, the free safety, the junior out of Dallas. Everybody stopped momentarily because they wondered if it was a forward pass or not. No, a fumble on the blind side hit. Well, remember, every play gets reviewed. Will this be reviewed? Was it in a completion? Was his elbow and arm going forward? But watch the bookends. Applying the pressure up the football field. Ortiz is the one that Ooh. beats Ulatowski. And Blake and Ortiz meet in the backfield. Now, was that a forward pass or was it a fumble? I, that one may be, uh, may be a look taken at that one because awfully short field that the Texas defense has to defend right here if that indeed is a takeaway for TCU's defensive football team. Ulatowski has to have a better technique than that. He turned his shoulder pads parallel to the sideline and gave up the edge. Ortiz you can't do that you can't turn your shoulder pads to the sideline and, and give up the edge like that and, and Ortiz gets the first big hit now was his arm going forward well that's that's a, that's a close one I mean looks like his elbow was moving forward as well as his arm with the football when Ortiz hit him but it's a bang bang play is there indisputable evidence is being reviewed is there indisputable evidence to overturn it the call on the field is reversed. The quarterback's on the forward pass. It's an incomplete pass. Fourth down, Texas on the 24 yard line. And I think that's a good call because, as you described, Joel, everybody on the football field stopped. I think everybody on the field thought it was an incompletion. And there was some doubt in their minds. But Ortiz gets the edge on Neil Tauski. You're going to have to keep track of that. Definitely the elbow coming forward, the arm coming forward. Good call to reverse it. And, and, uh, in a game like this, you can't have that type of play in such a momentum builder early on be not corrected. It was corrected as it should have been. Trevor Gerland is going to punt it away. The sophomore from Katie. Another Houston area guy. Working for the Longhorns. And back deep. It'll be Brian Bonner, the strong safety. TCU should get decent field position and a real low line drive, a turnable type up the middle past the 40. On a great field position all the way with a flag on the play. That'll bring some of the yardage back. Otherwise, it would have been to the 47. So we'll mark off the flag, come back, and TCU in good shape with the football once again.
Well, sure. there's 0 0 right now going on in the Lone Star State. At least there was in College Station. And Joel, since 2005, TCU's allowed one first quarter touchdown against Colorado State on November 11th, on November 25th. Only one first quarter touchdown. And that was the only one scored. Charles trying to bend it out and cut it back. They'll stack them, but about five on the carriers. They marked it down shy of the five, not back of the one. He's coming in for the Longhorns, Dave. Well, explosive plays. Arkansas State had 11 last week. Texas had nine. And then turnovers. Texas was minus one. When they win both of those categories under Mac Brown, they're 55 and 0. When they lose both, they've lost 15 of their 22 losses under Mac Brown. So that's going to be key. And then they want to finish the game. They want to. It starts with finishing plays. And then it goes to finishing series, quarters, halves game and then season you got to finish every play the second at a long five at the nine the court oh, underneath gone. and a shot taken that's his tight end drew michael finley you could hear it up here though popped as they sandwiched it and phillips get on it seems like every play right now the middle linebacker well this is a long field for texas to go colt mccoy got to move the chains and, and start the process TCU, when they have you backed up like they have Texas backed up, are really, really hard to put 10, 12, 14 play drives against because their defensive philosophy is at some point in time you're going to make a mistake against them. A first down on the reception. Charles, nowhere to go. Belt it and put down in the backfield. They got him low. Good penetration out on the edge. Blake's back in there. He makes his presence felt. Whether it's Ortiz one side or Blake on the other. You know who else is in there is Robert Henson. Robert Henson came downhill on a run blitz and just distorted the whole thing. Let's take a look at him right here. Now everybody's going to hit a gap, and here he comes, going right at the point of attack and just kind of muddles the whole thing up. That's a great call and great execution of said call. I mean, they're, they're just... They're not going to give an inch in the running game. They're very, very sound defensively. Everybody stays on their feet and hits their gaps. Loss of two, second and a dozen for McCoy out of the shotgun. And what an adjustment by Finley. Flag on the play, and we're going to see our third pass interference against the offense. Did he, pet, did he push off on Stephen Coleman? Stephen Coleman says yes. Stephen Coleman says the reason Finley adjusted back to the football is he pushed off on me. It would be the third pass interference call on Texas. Only number four on the defense. Coleman was the wrong. Penalty will be declined. First down. Coleman was wrong. He said, <laughs> they said, no, son. He didn't put it. You grabbed him, and he separated from you and caught the football. Finley is, is, a, is just a marvelous athlete. I mean, this is a big body. Watch him right here. A little, little smash route. You know, and he, he does a good job of separating, making the catch. That, that's a big body kid right there. And they move the chains once again. And it started back outside of their own four between the four and five. It's at the 30. Oh, it's Henson in. again. Ball's gone. Beat him the quickie. Swede, if he gets away, he's got some serious oh, space down the sideline. So wide an open field tackle by David Roach all by himself. And you got some big receivers. I mean, we saw Finley 6'5, 240. Lima Swede is 6'5, 220. And if you don't make the tackle, and that's what is so good with. I mean, you know, they'll blitz and make you get it out on a hot read, and then they make the tackle. They don't give up any yards after catch. They make you earn every inch of everything. They make you run so many plays. Eventually, you won't recognize what they're doing, and you blow up. Two of the higher-scoring teams in the nation last year. A shutout so far between the two. McCoy again, but is behind his tight end at the first down marker. A lot of people, Dave, wondered about the mentality of Texas coming into the game, and I bring that up because it's Mac Brown's 10th year. And as Mac Brown told us, his youngest team since he's been here. 20 of the first 44 on his two deep are freshmen or sophomores. So you wonder how a team is going to respond. It's a Super Bowl for TCU. But is there going to be that same sense of urgency for Colt McCoy and his teammates? Well, this is, we'll find out here. They, they haven't converted on third down yet, 0 for 4. Here they are in about a third, third and five. And you're right, Joe. They're trying to find out who are we? What's our identity? So from the 34. Pocket holds up a little bit better. McCoy hit as he released it. Still got it away in time for Cosby. First down to the 41. He had heat. Yep, that's a courageous effort by Colt McCoy. He felt the pressure, stepped up in the pocket, found himself a little bit of a, a room to set up and throw it, knowing that he was going to get hit. He, he feels Ortiz. He steps up, and Blake drills him, and he gets rid of the football. And that's a good job. He gets rewarded on the other end, making a good catch to Cosby. That's just... 
Good, good, good catch, you know, and, and then protect the football because you know TCU's coming. They're coming like heat-seeking missiles trying to knock that ball out of there. Outside of the 40, first down once again on a drive that started back at the four. Looks again. Go the other way. Cosby beats his man on the outside for a decent pickup. A five, almost six. Make it just five. He got away from Raphael Priest and enabled him. TCU is blitzing almost every down, and they feel it's sound. Cosby injured on the play. They feel it's sound. It's a sound against the run or the pass. So you see those linebackers walking up and getting after it at the line of scrimmage just about every snap. And they realize that the offensive line for Texas is in transition, just like the secondary for Texas. And Dick Bumpus says, you know, we're going to make it tough on them. We're going to make them recognize. We're going to make them communicate. We're going to make them uh, be perfect up front. And, and a way to remedy that, boy, he, uh, he just buckled his knee backwards, a little hyperextension. Yeah, Bonner got him low, and you got Henson high. Ooh, look at that right knee. That's a hyperextended knee right there. And uh, that's yeah. just that's just tough football. Well, that's also, that throws uh, a curveball into the game plan for special teams because that's a return man. You know what? He's walking off the field under his own power, though. I've had that happen for you. Hyperextend your knee, and it kind of locks up on you. You know, you might pinch cartilage. You don't necessarily tear it, but you pinch it. And then it releases. Second and now, you know, I think he's going to be all right. He walked off the field. I think he just, you know, pinched his knee basically on the hyperextension. I, I think we'll see Cosby back in the football game. So Colt McCoy, you think he's had to work for everything? 12 completions, 92 yards. It's been that tough against this defense. It was second best in total defense in the nation last year. Still completing two out of early three attempts. On the long count, Charles can't find it outside of his right tackle. Is this a quick D? The They're front seven, and I say the front seven, but they run a 4-2-5. But I mentioned what they do in total defense. You know, it'll drop off anywhere. The third best in scoring defense. You see what they did? Uh, they were the second best against the run last year at right. 61 a game. And a lot of people say, well, you know, hey, they, they play in, in a conference where most teams run the spread. You know, they, a they passing really, conference. Right, the spread offense, a passing conference. They played Baylor. You know, Baylor ran the spread, a passing offense, but look, Texas wants to run it, and they can't. 20 yards is it. It's 20. Now on eight carries. And it's intercepted, Whoa. going the other way. Stewart's got it. Look out, inside the 30. 10, 5, and he's in. TCU gets a first point to the game. On an unconventional score, a defensive touchdown. And in a battle like this, where both offenses are struggling, that is monumental. Field position and an unconventional score by either your special teams or your defense give you a tremendous leg up. Yeah, he's a big playmaker. His streak of three straight games with at least one interception was broken in the opener last week against Baylor. Senior from Mississippi. And, and a lot of it was due to pressure. Colt McCoy has been facing pressure extensively. And he felt pressure on that one. Colt McCoy's already got three interceptions, not halftime in the second game. Last year, he had seven for the season. So Manfredini for the point after on the highest snap. TCU, defensive specialist, they get points from that side of the field. Stewart with the interception return. And the Horned Frogs with a 7-0 lead before a stunned group in Austin. McCoy never saw him. A 7-0 lead for TCU. Neither offensive unit has scored yet as Drew Combs kicks it away. A straightaway kicker. Don't see that too often. Gets it back there, though. Cosby will take it to the goal line. And Cosby breaking the tackle, but still slowed up and lucky to get back to the 20-yard line. 27 left in the half. The first time Texas TCU have met as ranked team since 1984. TCU with the help of that young man, Tory Stewart, a senior from Mississippi, touchdown return on a pick of 45 yards after the first snap. And look back at that play. Colt McCoy out of the gun once again from his own 19. He has to step up because of the heat. Got rid of it. And he's got his tight end. That's to Michael Finley. Flag deep in the secondary once again. Let's take a look at the touchdown interception that gives TCU the lead, though. We'll have the penalty be uh, sorted out. But look, they do a double blitz. This is Stephen Hodge. This is the intercept right here, Tory Stewart. Hodge will blitz, and then they'll do a trail blitz with Tory Stewart. Colt McCoy never sees Stewart. 
And coming over the top to cover Lima Sweet is the other safety, David Roach. So they overloaded, and they had three safeties. They had a blitz safety, a trail blitz safety, and a safety coming over the top in coverage. Just they confused Colt McCoy, and that's what TCU's all about, creating confusion and doubt. And right now, Colt McCoy's saying, I never, ever saw Torrey Stewart. I didn't think they'd do a trail blitz. Now, another penalty while we were watching that on Texas, 45 yards in Markoff. So it was a holding call. So they had a first down to the 40, but now it's going to be shy of their own 10. Well, that's a 30-yard penalty right and there. And make it 54 yards after that one. That's their fifth. They'll give it off to Charles. Nice lane off to the right side with the counter action work. And that was her best running play last week for Charles, the counter. He gets it out to the 21. I can honestly say that I have not seen TCU cut in half by what I mean by that is somebody knocked off their feet. They stay on their feet and they run to the football. They got a nice little crease there, Texas did though, on the counter action. But it, it is just, I, I marvel at the athleticism of this TCU defense. Nobody is ever on the ground. Dick Bumpus, the defensive coordinator and his staff, they do a great job of coaching these kids. It'll be second, long eight. Complete for Nate Jones, struggling, trying to get to the marker, shot by a yard. Well, you bring up Dick Bumpus, and you're right, the defensive coordinator. Don't forget, though, when Gary Patterson took over this program in 2000, he was the defensive coordinator, so it's also his area of oh, specialty. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, they've been good for a long time now. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% on brand name products. Look better with Overstock.com. It's all about the O. And that's what's lacking right now for Texas, but give credit where credit is due. TCU defense. It's all about the D really today. Well, they're right now pitching a shutout for the season. First six quarters after shutting out Baylor. Charles trying to let the pursuit slide block by. He struggles. He gets the first down, but that's how tough it is to get a yard and a half. And Joel, I don't care what level of football you're playing. Pee Wee, high school, college, the NFL. What you call me? Shutting out a team is a, is a great accomplishment. And, and they did now, you know, Baylor missed a couple field goals. They had a fumble, you know, in the red zone and all that. But still, you shut somebody out, and then you come back against the number seven team in the country. You're shutting them out with a minute 36 to go in the first half of that game. You're playing some solid team defense. Gary Patterson is emotional. And I believe that the coach's personality filters down to his team. And he is a go get him guy, and that's what his defense is a go get him defense. We were here when they got uh, to Texas Stadium for their walkthrough. What was it, about 4 o'clock yesterday, 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon? Game change. They were, there was no chatter. Game they face. were focused. Yep. <laughs> they didn't talk. They got the cleats on. They got outside. They didn't put pads on. But they had a nice walkthrough. It was serious, serious. They're here for a business trip. I mean, they're here to get after it. <laughs> they they want to they wanna climb the ladder of success in another couple of rungs. Because they, they, they're 9-1 and one against BCS qualifier team since 2002. And Texas get on the board before they go to the locker room with throw way wide. Uh, Nate Jones. Well, how far has his program come for TCU? We talked about it with Gary Patterson. Can they use it as a measuring stick? Texas is a measuring stick game because they've won a national championship in the last three years. You know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to where we can climb the mountain and uh, we're not we're farther up the mountain than we were 10 years ago, but we're not where we need to be yet. Three out of the last four years, they had 11 win seasons. Not many teams can say that. But no. then other people are knocking them because they're in the Mountain West. Now, McCoy in trouble. Too oh, tall. It's going to be picked on the deflection. There goes Roach. Past the 35, inside the 30. David Roach, the weak safety, the senior from Abilene. Nate Jones could not control the football, and it glances off Nate Jones' hands. Also, there's some a, de a defensive back involved that, that makes makes it difficult, and, and that was none other than David Hart Hawthorne, actually a linebacker, making a great little little play on that. McCoy, Colt McCoy, trying to thread it in there to Nate Jones, and look at Hawthorne. I mean, that's athletic ability. Are you kidding me? That's a linebacker, and Roach is the beneficiary of the old tip drill. Boy, that's just and it's that's not just a good, great team. As we defense. saw, though, it's not a good throw to begin with. I don't think he expected the linebacker to be that athletic. He had, a, he had his receiver on a linebacker. Low throw and a scoop over on that far side. No. No catch, they say, for Urban Dickerson. So last year, only seven interceptions all season long. Four so far yep. over the first game and a half for Colt McCoy. Now, don't forget, one of the two last week was at the end of the half. It was a basic Hail Mary. Can we get anything out of a tip drill? Right. Well, in, in this one, though, in this game, 
One they took back for a touchdown. The second takeaway, they got it to 28-yard line. The defense scored points on one. They gave the offense an incredibly short field on the other, so these have been damaging. Second and 10. They get points off the turnover. Play fake with Watts, buys time. Dalton wide wow. open underneath. First grab of the game inside the five. It's Walter Bryant, the junior from San Angelo. He could have gone either way, Quentin Cunningham or Walter Bryant. They were both open. A broken coverage once again in the secondary. And the protection is sound. Little play action pass. Dalton's got plenty of time. He takes the pay. He pays the price. He's a courageous kid. Look, there are two open. I think somebody ran a wrong route. One grenade gets them both. But it worked out. It worked out. They they did. They had the field crowded in that one little spot. But nonetheless, TCU finds themselves first and goal. And if they punch this in for a touchdown, wow. They've got two timeouts still left. A minute ten on the board. They've got it at the four. First and goal. Banging his way as Watts. The junior from Center, Texas, gets it close to the two-yard line. Tripped up by Bomino, the linebacker. I'm going to go back once again. The matchup that Colt McCoy had, Nate Jones against a linebacker, David Hawthorne. And David Hoth Hawthorne looked as athletic to the football as Nate Jones did. Usually a quarterback says, I got my receiver and a linebacker. I'm going there. <laughs> didn't, pay, didn't pan out. Yeah, the Mountain West. 90% of the time they got inside the 20, they scored. Watts, will he get there? Slow him down to the one. It'll be third and goal from there. We're getting a little chippy out there now. A little bit chippy. 27 seconds left in the first half. So TCU scores a defensive touchdown. And now their defense has once again put them in position for more points before they go to the locker room. Colt McCoy, as Greg Davis, his offensive coordinator, told us. He's not enjoying things right now. He's trying to be too perfect. Impressive. Impressive a little bit, you know. And, 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 and right here, this is an opportunity for one team to get some serious momentum going into the locker room. If Texas can somehow have a goal line stand and limit this to a field goal, or somehow TCU gets no points out of it, they'll go into the locker room on a high. If TCU thumps this in there, they'll go into the locker room out of their mind. I mean, TCU, this is their Super Bowl. This is their stage like their head coach Gary Patterson says to, to, to raise it up a run on the ladder and to climb another few steps on the mountain and, and this is the stage to do it and let's not forget his quarterback on the other end the retro freshman Houston high school player of the year a couple of years at Katie High boy has he been poised yeah he drips with it Stackham rocks the tailback will it get there no nope. they push it back he may have lost a half yard Big time stand. Be ready, Chris. It'll be a timeout coming up for TCU. That's their last one, isn't it? That's their last timeout. Yes. So a field goal try is going to be coming up for Manfredini. And once again, in the red zone, this is pad level. Which line is going to get under the other one? And you see all the white helmets and, and burnt orange jerseys getting into creases. Derry, there, Derry shot an outside gap. There, were no, there was nowhere to go. TCU's offensive line did not handle the gap, the gap of the goal line defense, the gap charges of the Texas Longhorns. It looked like Gary got between the tackle on that side and the tight end. And, and he came in clean and it all starts with the defensive lineman up front starting by reestablishing that line of scrimmage backwards. Well, Manfredini's on the field. He converts over 90% of his field goals for his career. You should know about this kid who started his career in Cincinnati. Yeah, he, he didn't miss in Cincinnati. He was 10 for 11 in Cincinnati. And he said, you know, I'm going to TCU. For his career is over 90%, 90.2. His first try of the contest. 20 seconds left in the half. Clean exchange. And points off a turnover once again for TCU. So their defense is set up all 10. They may keep it on the ground. It's not Combs kicking it away, but Manfredini instead. Not the straightaway kicker, but the soccer style. Squibber. Squibber. Oh, Benaya back. May not touch it. And it's a chip shot. Von Cosby. And a fair catch was called for by the up man. And the Longhorns regroup time. There's a penalty flag. It's a fair catch by Ullman, the tight end. TCU was offside. Clock doesn't start. They mark it off. So with 17 seconds left, you got it to the 26. Not having balance has hurt Texas. 11 carries, 33 yards. So all of a sudden, the pressure is on your quarterback. 
they've got to alleviate that pressure. I don't think uh, Texas fans in, in the program thought that Colt McCoy would have multiple interception games in both of his first two starts. This year. Charles, and that should do it for the half. Charles, he gets four. He's hurt. Looked up a little bit. He took a shot. Yeah. He will get up. He'll be okay. I think his left shoulder, he's, he's holding that left arm like his left shoulder's bothering him. He's not He's not in good shape as he leaves the football field. Yeah, Colt McCoy pressing a little bit. Down the stretch of the first half. And a couple of scores off the defense. Just a great scheme by TCU. They ran the double safety trailer blitz. And the trailer safety, Jory Stewart, makes the interception. And then you have... You have wide receiver on linebacker. Horthon wins that battle, and Roach takes it back to a good field position, and Colt McCoy can't believe it. So that's where they go to the locker room. First time that Texas has not scored in the first half of the game since the Red River battle. Wow. 2004, matchup with Oklahoma. A TCU's defense is about as salty as Oklahoma's was that day. This TCU defense is the real deal. Texas has four yards per play. TCU has a 10-point lead, and they've only generated 2.8 yards per play. Unbelievable defensive half. Let's, Let's head downstairs now, Dave, and join Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joe. Just got through talking to Mac Brown. He said it's just a great game between two good teams with two great defenses. He's interesting to see what happened here in the second half. Time of possession really killed the Longhorns in that first quarter. They got it rolling in the second quarter, but he said turnovers really hurt them. Also, keep in mind, guys, Jamal Charles went out of the first half. He was holding his shoulder heading into halftime. We'll see what happens here in the second half. Cosby weaves his way for good yardage out to the 35. So solid field position for Texas. Didn't have it all that often. Well, one time they did. When they had it, they had the Horn Frogs 48, their best field position to start a drive. This was a key drive. They were in the red zone, had two consecutive offensive pass interference penalties, took them out of the red zone. They missed a long field goal. And then these two, obviously, they were really, really painful. They, uh, TCU got the 10 points off the interception return for a touchdown and interception return for short field. Very, very tough sledding for Texas's offense in the first half. So Jim Knox just talking about Jamal Charles. And he went down, Dave, with that shoulder, you could tell. Yep. Yeah, he grabbed it and, and kind of walked off the field holding that left arm like the shoulder was bothering So the junior from Missouri City, Texas, Chris Obanaya, will get his first carry of the day. He lunges for about a yard. They had him in the backfield. Get him behind the line. He was lucky to get a yard. Second and nine coming up. And it's painful to lose Charles because he was the most productive in the first half. I mean, nobody had a great first half. He averaged 3.6 yards per carry. Long run of only 12 hits. So that's one explosive run in the first half for Texas. And then, of course, Colt McCoy with the two interceptions who were, who were deadly there at the, uh, in the second quarter. And there was no doubt after that first pick, he was pressing a little bit. A couple of poor throws before the interception. They give him time oh, on the deep out. That's a good gun. Juan Cosby, that's a long throw for Colt McCoy. He needs that kind of confidence builder early in the second half. You're right, Joel. That ball's in the air for a long time. You have to throw this with velocity. And routes are, routes are run well. You have one-on-one. -on -one. The receivers have to win their one-on-one -on -one battles. And, and, and Cosby, he won his one-on-one -on -one battle with Priest. And then if, if Colt McCoy gets the protection, his receivers win their one-on-one -on -one matchups, he can deliver the football. The opening minute of the second half. Texas shut out for the first time in the first half of the game since Oklahoma. Red River Battle, 2004. Now, how do they respond? Luke Tienan's in there, one of the few times they've used the fullback, and he had a nice block. Obanaya powers his way for about four down to the 39, but Tienan took his man on pretty well, didn't he? He did. And Obanaya's a big kid, 6'1, 2 and a quarter. I mean, this, this, he'll thump it up in there. He, he's got something to him. He runs behind that pad level pretty darn well. The explosive plays, only yeah. a couple. And an explosive is 12 or more on a run, 16, 16 or more on a pass. Right. And the two interceptions, obviously, were deadly. And finishing plays, that's subjective. I mean, you know, when you average four yards per play, you have to wonder, did you finish? Well, I think you have to tip the cap to TCU's defense. They're pretty darn good. Six straight shutout quarters to start the season. Now out of the back, a good grab. First down, Obanaya, because it was a low throw, a flutter. 
First down by about a yard. This, this is a, a running back bailing his, his, his quarterback out. Play action fake to Obanaya and then throw him the football. That's a good grab. He led him well, but he led him low. Obanaya showing really good athleticism and flexibility to go down and snatch that ball. Maybe with Obanaya in there, they try to go to the back of the flat more often than they would if it would have been Jamal Charles. First and ten. Toss Obanaya. Waits for the kickout block and what a speed of pursuit. What a run by David Hawthorne. He, he thought he had a lane over the right side, didn't he? He's phenomenal. 11 tackles last week against Baylor, and he is active tonight. He was the one that made the deflection on the on the interception that was critical that David Roach got to set up the three points. And look at him run inside out pursuit. And again, it's rare to see a TCU Horn Frog off his feet on the ground defensively. Hawthorne's one that it's very hard to get him off his feet. All these kids have incredible balance and closing speed. A bright guy as well. He's a graduate student right now at TCU. Both McCoy on second and ten. Pocket holds up. Ton of time over the middle. Almost a great grab by Nate Jones. It's a good coverage. You know, you, you have coverage like that, challenging the play. Priest was in the vicinity again. Colt McCoy said, you know, I have confidence in you. Nate Jones, you had a great week for me. Made nine catches last week. But Priest rises to the occasion. Contested catch. Priest, uh, is it, bothersome enough to Jones where he can't secure the pick. It really timed him. Yeah, yeah, that left arm come in with the right arm going high. Yeah, he raked up the ball. You know, I mean, that's just good coverage. It's nothing more than that. You very rarely see receivers running wide open against this TCU defense. Huge third and ten momentum wise for the Longhorns. Down at the 33. And a missed field goal. They're only try a 42 yard miss and a timeout early in the second half for Colt McCoy. He's trying to spread the defense. They doubled up on the wide side of the field. Let's see what they do when they come back. Need a lot, though. Ten on the next snap to keep the drive alive. From the 33, a third and ten for the Longhorn. Only two of seven so far on the third down tries. Pocket holds up well. Now McCoy on the edge. Can he get it done? End zone has a man. Oh, Touchdown, dude. Nate Jones. Well, you got you got to basically you end up with a wide receiver on a safety, David Roach, and and the play was a great one by Colt McCoy. They rush four and they run a double twist inside. They lose contain with the stunt. McCoy gets out of pocket, buys some time, changes the launch point, and can't quite make the play as Roach and Jones, after a career high nine receptions last week, gets the Longhorns right back in this one. You have an injured offensive lineman at the 40-yard line. And, uh, and he, he's that's Ulatowski. And uh, he's uh, he's hurting a little bit out there. Now, as you mentioned, a very warm night for the big guys, especially. How about the pass, though? Yeah. I mean, that's an inch or two away from the fingertip of the defensive back. Yeah, that's just that's a great throw on the run. And uh, he, he put perfect trajectory. And you don't like to see carts and that type of thing come out to take players off the field. And that's what we've got going on right there at the 40 yard line. A big old cart taking. Getting ready to take Ulatowski out of there, but Nate Jones. Nine catches last week yep. after 13 all of last season. And that was, uh, Texas needed that. You know, they're down 10 nothing. TCU has all the momentum. You know what I thought started, though? Uh, the momentum swing for Texas was when they had the goal line stand, they limited to a field goal. If they allow TCU to thump it in for a touchdown, you know, they, they, they get a little defensive momentum. And Ulatowski says, I'm not going off the field on a car. I, I'm going off the field under my own power. He's got a right arm or shoulder injury, and he's shaking his head like it's not good. And here you see him right here. Let's see what happens. Everything. He's working against Blake inside, and as, as he goes to the as he goes to the ground, immediately that right arm just gives on him. And I, he, he might have done something to his elbow or his or his forearm or whatever. But when he hit that ground, it was like a one point landing. You have a 300 pound body hitting that right arm, right hand on the ground at one point landing. It could have gone anywhere. It could have been damaged to the wrist, elbow, shoulder. Who knows? Yeah, well, remember what happened last year. That Nebraska low key breaks his leg, his right. fibula, and doesn't get any help off the field. He walks off the field on his own yeah. with a broken leg. That's a legend, uh, a legend deal right there. <laughs> now, Bailey to the point after. 
Missed a 42 yard field goal. Man, splits the uprights on this one. Longhorns still. Last drive started at their seven. This drive at the eight. They've got to take care of the football. No turnovers. McCoy back the other way. Wide nice. open his tight end. Misdirection, a little drag. And he's got it to 30. Boy, is that a basic block down and then release? It was a, it's called the tight end slow. Finley, Finley grabs his right calf. I think he's cramping up big time. Looks like he's got a big old knot in that right calf. He's trying to massage out of there. You can see it. Man, It's just, it looks like a golf ball in that calf. Ooh, he's cramping like a big dog. Man, you got to stretch that, that calf out. <laughs> you got to get him some fluids. Ooh, yeah, get those toes bent back. Get those toes bent back. Ooh, release, release. That is painful, oh, too. Oh, my goodness. There's pain. about 60 seconds of excruciating pain. Well, watch, watch him uh, slow block here on the back side. He's going to slow block, and then he's going to release. He's going to release. Oh, he's going to. Oh, he was on the other side. My bad. Yeah, and he right. ran a shallow cross. But it was a slow block. He blocked and then released, and, and the secondary totally lost track of him just like I did. And he made the catch and made yards after catch. That's just a great design right there. Some misdirection from the quarterback sold it as the roll went the other way. Here, Michael Finley, just a sophomore. 31 catches last year. That was the best ever by a freshman at the tight end position. And they've had some good ones in recent years here at Texas. Great Alamo Bowl. Their win over Iowa. He had eight grabs in that game. You know, what, what you have to do as a tight end on that, the tight end uh, hide or the tight end slow, is you have to sell the block. And Finley did such a great job of that. And he's rigor mortis is starting to soften up a little bit here as he gets off the field. <laughs> but if we can show that play again and show what, what, what Finley did as a tight end, that would be outstanding because he sold it. He went to the ground. He made people think that he was doing a cut block. Watch him on the front side. He'll come down and, and hit the ground and then get up late and run the shallow cross. And it totally, he, once he sees him hit the ground, he says, okay, he's blocking. And he just, he says, I gotta, I gotta chase the run. Uh-oh, oh no, it's a throwback. That's just great job by Finley selling it. Big time play right there. So Colt McCoy one way, the ball the other way. And let's not forget Colt McCoy and the presence he's showing and bouncing back and responding after the first half that got away from him in the second quarter. He looks like a coach's son, doesn't he? His father Brad is coach at Jim Ned High School. Yeah. Yep. Tuscola, Texas, about 20 miles outside of Abilene. And there's not a lot of people in Tuscola, Texas. No, there's they, a one, one, maybe two stoplights in Tuscola. I bet they have good barbecue <laughs> down there, though. He's, there's barbecue everywhere in Texas. Boy, man. when Colt McCoy came through the redshirt freshman last year, that was the story. Well, that meant a lot to those people. Started all 13 last season. Well, that's some nice hair on Galena. First and 10 from the 30. Moving the pocket again. Oh, running out of racing room, but he's got Jones. Time and a break for the defensive back, Coleman. He got there. He didn't know it, no. but he got there in a perfect time. Well, Colt McCoy underthrew that football. And, and as a result, Stephen Coleman, they have enough speed to recover. And, and Colt McCoy couldn't transfer his weight, and he floated that thing a little bit. And because the ball was underthrown and Jones had to jump and wait for it, Stephen Coleman. Luckily, he, had, he never saw the football. He was just face guarding Jones. And he said, okay, I can see his eyes getting big. I know the ball's coming, so I'm going to try to time it. And he just fortunately did because he was beaten. But Colt McCoy could not plant that foot, transfer his weight, and throw the ball out there and lead Jones. Yeah, the number so far for McCoy in the second half. Little underneath screen, Nate Jones. Middle of the field's available. He's got a first down across the midfield strike. Doesn't take much when you've got speed on a little flanker out, or basically a screen, kick screen for a flanker. He's the beneficiary of TCU paying a lot of attention to line the Swede. And since they're paying a lot of attention to line the Swede, the other receiver has a lot of one-on-ones. He's going to win. He's going to, and he's winning. This is nice, just a nice little alley screen right there, and he uses his blockers expertly and, and takes it up the football field extremely well. Tremendous block. I mean, a couple of guys got out there and just took Robert Henson, the linebacker, to the turf. And that's the, one of the first times I've seen a defensive player on the ground. And Jones, he, he made it pay. It's good for 21 yards and a first down. McCoy looking for the out underneath instead. Good catch and run. And the yards after the catch by Quan Cosby. And the momentum belongs to Texas right now. He wanted to go to Nate Jones again. 
And that would have been a deep out. You know what's going on is, is Tony Hills, the big left tackle, is doing a pretty good job on, on Blake. Let's take a look up here at the top. That, that's pretty good. I mean, that's technique, that's staying after it. And, and Blake wasn't the one that made the hit. The hit was David Hawthorne, the, the blitzing linebacker. But, you know, Nate, uh, Tony Hills has done a pretty darn good job in, in his set. And, and he's a guy, you talk about somebody, he was the best tight end in Texas. And he had a really, really bad injury, nerve damage. He had, he had dropped it for a while. He's come back from that. Colt McCoy, silent yeah. count bolts. Didn't take long when he got into the center. Dallas Griffin did he? Just goosed him, you know. <laughs> First down. <half. laughs> just he doesn't tell anybody else. He just he just kind of gets the hands under there and gives the center, uh, you know, a slight hit. Hey, here I am, and uh, I'll take care of him. Snap it up there, and let me just scoot. Follow you, close you up behind you. Go out of West Texas. A score. Colt McCoy leads him down to the 37 on a drive that started back at his own eight. You ever played Duck Duck Goose, Joel? <laughs> Not with you. <laughs> McCoy oh, underneath the grab. That's the other tight end. Peter Ullman with his first catch of the game. Yeah, they, they're well stacked at that position. Texas has got multiple tight ends they can use. They'll catch it, they'll block it. You know, it, it's rare to have more than one tight end on your team that can can block as well as he can catch the football. Texas has more than one. Colt McCoy now 22 of 34 for 222 yards. So far so good in the second half. It looks like he's calmed down as opposed to last few minutes of the first half. Maybe pressed a bit. A long drive working close to field goal range already. Now out of the gun. Jamal Charles scampers nice. up the middle for a first down. He's all the way down to the 16. Hit it in a hurry, didn't he? Yeah, he spun away from David Roach. He made the unblocked safety miss. And that's what great running backs do. Great running backs have to make the first unblocked guy miss. And Charles did it with a tight pirouette. I mean, his ballet coach would have been proud of this one. The line gets him going. Quick hitter. Watch the spin. Smooth Whoops. move. See you later. That's Brought to you by Keystone Light. I have a Keystone Light on this smooth move because watch this one. Whoops. See you later. And Roach was in great tackling position. And Charles gave him the leg and took it away. Ooh. Outside of the 15, Charles dragged down from behind. The man who came in, Jerry Hughes, the sophomore again, on his back. And also over there, actually Kelly Griffin. Hughes was on the opposite side. He's the first true freshman, Kelly Griffin is, number 69 in that white jersey. The first true freshman Gary Patterson has ever started in his seven years as a head coach at TCU. 280, 6'1". That's a load. It's because there was a suspension of the starting tackle ahead of him for the season, and Griffin's had to step up, and he's played very, very well. He was playing high school football last season. Now he's in the big show in Austin. He's from Irving. Minute 45 in the county. Now out of the gun. And flinch. dead ball foul. Yep, he was a flinch. All start. Yep. False start, 86 offense, five-yard penalty, second down. That's, you've got to remember, Finley went out with that cramp. Allman has taken over the tight end. And the thing is, this is after a timeout. After a timeout, you can't do this. You can't sustain a penalty in flinch like that when you're inside the red zone, you know, after a timeout. And you have to be careful. Colt McCoy has to really focus on ball security. The last 20 trips to the red zone by the opposition, TCU has five interceptions. 20% of the time, they pick the football off in the last 20 opportunities in the red zone by the opponent. 59 yards in penalty, six mark-offs against Texas on second and about 15. Screen again, Nate Jones. Not as productive as the last one. Boy, talk about congestion. Yeah. Talk about recognition. I mean, TCU said, oh, we've seen that. And they, in the inside-out pursuit was astonishing. I mean, they are quick. They get off blocks, and they just sprint. They ran into the underneath tackle, John Fanua. 5'10", 275-pounder up against, that's about a 100-pound difference. I want his hair. I want Fanua's hair. He, he's, he's got the, the, the locks of Troy Palomalu going down there. Third and 10. Maintain the drive. McCoy in trouble. Won't get to the marker. Oh, wow. Boy, does he take a pop? Oh, loses wow. the football. TCU comes up with it. Wow. Colt McCoy with a poor decision. 
Well, what you have to do is, is you can't take a hit like that. You have to give yourself up. Colt McCoy is looking at the official like, my forward progress will stop. Chase Ortiz on the recovery. Man. But you can't take on it. It looked like a linebacker. Yeah, and, and this, that's what cost him at Kansas State. He took on a linebacker and lost that one. And, and you, you have to give yourself up. Plus, he, there was somebody, it, it, you, you might, I don't know, you might want to challenge that because was this forward progress stop? Phillips rips the ball out. He's not down. Phillips rips the ball out, but I mean, he was stood up and the forward progress, there was no whistle. So I guess you can't say it. Colt McCoy, he's, he's got somebody's around his legs, then Phillips rips it out of there. The only argument you could have is forward progress to stop, but there's no, no nothing you can do because there was no whistle. So they come away empty now on a drive take, that started all the way back at, at their own eight. But it was so quick. How could you say you didn't hear a whistle? Yeah. That's going to be the difficult aspect of it. Yeah, and, and we, you know, talked about the five interceptions in the last 20 opportunities in the red zone against uh, TCU's defense. Then they come up with a fumble, a takeaway on the 21st. Six takeaways in the last 21 journeys in the red zone for the opposition if this stands up. That is mind-boggling good. Yeah, that is the quarterback, and you do so many things well on a, a drive that long and that time consuming. You're not going to get it, and he was a good five yard shot of where he needed to go. Then you have to have the presence to go down. You got to pick your battles. You don't do that against a big middle linebacker, maybe against a smaller defensive back, but not a middle linebacker like, like you see right there in Jason Phillips, who, you know, eats raw meat and slobber knocks people. I mean, you just, you're not going to win that battle. Plus, he had a defensive lineman hanging around his legs. All you do is assume the fetal position at that point. You know, you give yourself up. And, and you hope at that point maybe they hit you and you cause a personal foul. It looked like a lock for three and a tie game if they don't get the first down on third and ten. And that failure, just three of nine on their third down drives. It's been picked twice. Now the play stands. It's a fumble. This That's is three huge. turnovers. This is huge, obviously. I mean, we're talking about a three-point game here. And, and is it a turnover in the red zone or not? It's a momentum changer either way. John Bible, the referee, talking to the crew upstairs. And they're taking a long, long look at it. After review, the call on the field is reversed. The runner's knee was down. It'll be Texas's ball, fourth and sixth on the 11-yard line. He set the game clock to 101. That is a huge break for Texas if they can get three. And that, as a result of the defensive lineman draping around, Colt McCoy was the left knee down. Yeah, it is. The left knee's down. The ball is still in his possession. And then it's ripped out late. That is a good call. His left knee was down. And then the ball was ripped out after the fact by Jason Phillips. I mean, that's a good call. By, by rule, that, that is a good call. It'll be a 28-yard field goal attempt. Ryan Bailey, he missed his first try of the new season in the first half, a 42-yarder. He just barely hooked it. Now, this requires a little bit of a draw, doesn't it? And he's got it. It is all even in Austin. Final minute of the third, a very entertaining third, and a productive 10-point third for Texas to get back into the game. What he had a wedge into a win on the short when the ball is loose. There's going to be a wrestling match at the bottom of this. Oh, yeah. Strong hands, wrist forearms win this one. And it can change possession multiple times in there. I've been in those, boy. That ball slides around sometimes amongst uh, different hands and arms. Texas has the football. Wow. Do you believe it? I, I, think, uh, I think the tight end, Quentin Cunningham, made a bad decision trying to come up and dive to make a play on that football. So... Boy, a turnover that, that was reversed with Colt McCoy's knee down allows the field goal to be kicked. And then Cunningham can't control it on a diving effort. It's around his legs. And that, that's just a, a, a heads-up recovery uh, right there by James Henry. And uh, unfortunate turnover, short field. TCU's defense, their backs right up against the wall immediately. So Texas gets it back. They've outgained TCU 150. 17 yards alone in this quarter. Total domination, and they needed it. They've got it the 26 of the Horn Frogs and show the reverse for the first time, and it doesn't work. They stay at home. Now, what a job. 
by the defense taking care of Nate Jones. Chase Ortiz, he always stays here, doesn't he? He's a smart football player. Another guy involved in that play, Tory Stewart. I mean, they run. They run, 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 boy. Ortiz, former linebacker, tight end in high school. Now he's a six foot three inch, 250, 255 pound defensive end. I, I think in both cases, Blake and Ortiz are tweeners for NFL. On the outside linebackers, but the guys with that kind of athletic ability, they're going to play in the, in the league for And our first game on FSN today. It won a few overtimes, and Texas A&M prevailed 47 to 45 over Fresno State. Don't think we'll have many points, but we could see an overtime or two. It has been that good through three. End of the third quarter. It's tied at 10. You're watching Big 12 football, all presented by Kia Serra on FSN. We get ready now for the fourth and final 15 minutes of regulation. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. Our game summary as we get ready for the first snap of the fourth. Jamal Charles trying to bounce it out. A lot of team speed. They bend him to the boundary. He got it down to the 24. A gain of about five going back now to our game summary. Yeah, and as you look at it, Texas outgained TCU by 130 yards in the third quarter alone. And uh, McCoy obviously came to life with that touchdown pass being huge. Texas had one explosive play in the first half. They had five in the third quarter. And, you know, we saw first game of our triple header 92 points scored in triple overtime this one we got 20 points scored after three quarters we've seen an offensive clinic clinic and now we're watching a defensive clinic third and eight for the 24 will they be able to get points off a turnover let's come in up the middle McCoy sees it it's available to the 10 to the five popped out of bounds just short he's in the one he got a nice block from his running back, too, up the middle. Yeah, what he did, Joel, is TCU gambled, and they were they overloaded Colt McCoy, took it up the other end yet. Watch, two linebackers hit on one side. Look at that red seat part. There's no linebacker on the other end gap because they were doing a blood cross up to the between the center and right guard. Colt McCoy realized it right away, and he said, I'm gone. I'm taking this to the house. Great recognition by Colt McCoy when he saw both linebackers stack to hit the A-gap between their center and right guard. He hammered it up there between his left, the center and left guard. Richard Freshman on a long view. Vondrell McGee in for the first time. He'll get it left side, stacked right there. He wanted to go airborne. It didn't work. As Roach came up, a couple of them came up and pushed him back. Yeah, Blake was an air traffic controller and said, you're not getting up. <laughs> I mean, you know, Blake, you get, watch, watch Blake. Oh, no, I'm the air traffic controller, and I'm the air traffic stopper. See you later. I mean, that's just a pretty good defensive charge by TCU. Reestablishing the line of scrimmage backwards. Now they had a similar situation last week and didn't get in. The game, big lane, he's in. First lead of the game for Texas. Surge up front, tackle blocking down. Man, they just—that's power football. It seemed like everybody was was in the hole making blocks. And low key, the big uh, defensive tackle in there as a as a fullback. Big old low key said, "Follow me, my man." Low key, a 300 pounder just clearing a path. That was just great power football off the right side of the Texas offensive front. It's delay. The penalty. Try. So the point after try. Five yards further back for Ryan Bailey. Now, this is the first lead of the game. 17 unanswered for Mac Brown's Texas Longhorns, and it's points off a turnover. After Hunter Lawrence put it up at the other sophomore from Bernie outside of San Antonio. Good job. He knocked it down like a beautiful wedge at the pin. But this is huge. Not only the extra point, but they're out of timeouts. Texas does not have a timeout left in the game. And it could go down to the wire tonight. Point after Bailey gets it. First lead of the night for the Texas Longhorns. And it comes with 14.09 left in the fourth. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox. Back in Austin. That was Gary Patterson. They told Jim Knox at halftime. It's a 60 minute game. They were up 10 to nothing to the half. He doesn't want to be a prophet in this case. Now 
All of a sudden, they're down by seven. Lawrence kicks it away. Over the far side, it's going to be Marcus Brock from the four. A design return. Wright goes up the middle. Flags down. So a penalty, you would have to think, with an illegal block. As they put him down at the 27. TCU, by the way, is still looking for their first first down of the second half. They've only had two possessions, Dave, and they've both been three and out with a punt. And, and a big factor in this football game, look at that, less than a yard per play on first down. Wow. Oh. I mean, that, that puts you in the off schedule immediately. Block in the back, number 21 on the return team. The penalty will be 10 yards from the 20-yard line, first and 10 at the 10. Irvin Dickinson with, with the hold. Irvin Dickinson with the hold, or the illegal block. It's going to cost this football team some field position, and, and it's based on speed. You know, and, and, and here you have it. He just pushes him in the back, and uh, obviously it was a, a factor. He was closing on at the point of attack to make a play. But the replay official, the booth official today, Mac Brown had no timeouts to challenge Colt McCoy's play. The booth replay official was heads up enough to want to take another look at it, and he saw that Colt McCoy's knee was down. Now from the 10, Dalton looked one way, went the other, a flag down from the linesman. The pass taken in at the 15, a gain of about five. Holding 79 offense. Half the distance to go, remains first down. He threw it from such a good distance, you figured maybe somebody hooked somebody. And yeah. it was Nick Richmond, the tackle on the right side. Let's take a look at him out here, see what he does, see if he reaches out and grabs someone. And Oh, it's an inside rush, and yeah, oh yeah, he's got the he's got the big old hook. He's got the hook going on, and he, you got to call that because Aaron Lewis had a beat to the inside, and he just wrapped his arms around him to keep his quarterback clean. Coach Gary Patterson, he said it at halftime with Doxy. He said, "I'm telling my team that the game's 60 minutes, not 30." Christian from the goal line as he handed it off. He was almost in the end zone. A gain of a yard for the five to the six. Downstairs we go, Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joe. I'll tell you what, I look over my right-hand shoulder and look on the bench. It's Colt McCoy. They're massaging his left calf. That's right. Possibly Cram settling into Colt. On that long run, he pulled up a little bit and started limping. They took him directly over the bench, and they're massaging that left calf right now. Lay Cram's down here on the Longhorn sidelines, guys. All right, Maxine. He also, at the end of that play, he did take a shot. He got a pop right at the one when he was knocked out of bounds. Second and 14. Dalton looking for the middle screen. Now dumps it off the other way to Christian. Not a bad call. And McElroy, second consecutive time. He showed incredible speed. Now it's going to be a huge third down. Deep in their own territory. Trailing buys from seven. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. With the convenience of shopping at home, you can save up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com. It is all about the O. Well, it could be another one, two, three, and out for TCU. You mentioned, Joel, the first two possessions they did. Here they face a third, 10 plus. Not a situation you want to be in backed up at your own 10 yard line against this Texas defense playing so well. Four of 12 on the third downs thus far. A third and 10. Dalton, time into double coverage and almost intercepted. And he threw it in the direction of Walter Bryant. But the defensive back had a better shot at the football. And on that play, it was Brandon Foster. Well, you talk about halftime adjustments. Texas has made a bunch on offense and defense. And, and this, this is where it all starts, with, with pressure. And that's right in the old smush. And low key uh, just does, does not mess around. Low, low key is one big, powerful human being. Here's a guy that can bench press 515 pounds, and Dwayne Aquino loves it. When Loki's in the game, they're they're tough to handle in pass protection. They'll give you a number after this punt. Will it be a short field now for Texas up by seven? Beautiful punt. But Lee Cosby back at his 42. Can't make the first one miss. He slowed him down. So good job downfield on the coverage by Ibele. And Cosby will be put down shy of the 45. We'll be back after this word from Dr. Pepper. They have definitely contained Swee, but on the opposite side, well, the recipient has been Nate Jones. Nine catches last week, career best. He got seven for 85, where Swee only has four now for 26. Talk about the disparity in offense. Swede's doing his job, though. He's being doubled, and they're saying, Jones, we're going to let you go one-on-one, -on -one, and Jones is winning. That's... Good job by Steve. On third and four. McCoy. Ball gone. 
Jones got it. And that's a great timing play by the two. Good communication. And it's a first down. So McCoy is the story right now in the second half. Pulled it off in front of a very good one. Brian Bonner, Joel Myers, Dave Latin, Jim Knox. We continue. Inside of 11, stopped it momentarily for the movement of the change. But if they don't convert on third and four, they waste great field position to start that drive at their own 44. And I got to give a tip of the cap to the Longhorn defense. The offense was struggling. Colt McCoy had two turnovers, one taken back for a touchdown. And then the defense, after a short field, the second interception, they held it to a field goal. Defense hasn't given up a score, and they allowed the offense to get in sync. Charles, a single set and a deep one at that. Skips his way through the line, makes him miss into the open field. Jamal Charles, by far his best run of the night. And he's out of bounds at the 12. Well, he finally found a cutback lane against TCU. They do such a great job, even though they run to the football so hard, they very rarely over-pursue. This time, they did. Look at look at just Henson over-pursuing. And, and he's on the wrong side of the wrong side of the formation. And, and, and Charles saw him and said, you know what, I'm cutting this back. And he cut it back violently, and then he took it to the house. Well, he, he's watching 51, and he sees 51. Rolling back to the onside, he's the backside linebacker. So he's on the wrong side of the hash mark. I'm cutting it back on. Nice job, nice vision. So the Big 12s out to a 100-meter champion a couple of years ago as a freshman. Waits again, lets it slide. Gets about two on that one to the 10. But this is not just so-so speed we're talking about. This is a guy that is a true freshman, won the 100 meters with a time of 10.23. Try to catch him. Yeah, uh, I think to this year though he's showing he, he put on a, he's, he didn't run uh, in, in the uh, in the spring. He, put, he he worked in the weight room and, and worked on his football, and that dedication puts some weight on him. He runs tougher now. He breaks more tackles. He's more consistent, more in football, and he's paid off for him. It's at the ten. We're at second and eight. Now McCoy on a play fake is popped. He's fortunate that it did go out of bounds the way it did, a wounded duck. Yeah. Stephen Hodge got him. He did. Colt McCoy said, I want to throw this away, but he had nothing on that on that football. Well, you saw Jamal Charles that close, nine yards away from stopping the streak of 21 consecutive games without a 100-yard rusher against this exceptional defense of TCU. Well, in 75 games under Gary Patterson, they've only given up 10 100-yard rushers. As you mentioned, none. 21 straight games. That is great team defense. Trying to make it a two score game. Can they get in the end zone? Will they have to settle for a three? Or at least a try for a three on third and eight from the 10. Once again, out of the shotgun. Pocket holds up a little bit better. Now it collapses. McCoy beats him out of the backfield. Gets a late block. And he's out of bounds right at the first down marker. Where will they spot it? Well, the, the guy he beat was Ortiz, and he's exiting stage right. He's leaving the football field. Ortiz is tapping out. I mean, he's going to the sideline. And watch him right here. He's going to be the one putting on the pressure on McCoy. And he beats a double team. Back chips to help. And, and whoops, can't, can't catch him. McCoy feels him. He's on the front side. He says, I'm going to get away. Ortiz is coming. And when he dove to make the tackle and McCoy took, uh, took off from him, Ortiz had to leave the field. And now he's just trying to catch his breath and recompose himself over there. You got a block from Lima Sweet downfield. That's why you saw one of the horn frogs just go flying. And you play the percentages. You're short of the first down by a yard. You can make it a two-score game. But the clock is running out. And it's a timeout by TCU. The uh, Longhorns sent the field goal unit out there late, and TCU had the wrong group on the field. Yeah, but the it, Longhorns were going to have problems getting the snap. It was down to four, and the holder got on the field late for Manfred, or for Ryan Bailey. Gary Patterson didn't like he's chewing him out right now. He didn't like what he saw out there, and he's the one that, that did call the timeout. I, you know, you, you look at this, though, the way TCU is being handled by Texas defense, even this field goal, if they go up two scores, that's a big uphill climb. That's like a Mount our, our Everest climb for TCU's defense to get two scores. And you used one of your timeouts. Yeah, the injury at the end of the first half, Jamal Charles, a stinger. Yeah. You can tell he could barely get up. Look at it. He's, he's got the left, the left arm in there, cradled in there. But he said, you know what? I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm back. The stinger's gone away. I'm going to spin away from people. That was the smooth move right there. And then the cutback. 
and then the speed. And he once he gets in space, he's a tough guy to handle because he's got so many so many moves and he's got the quicks. He can accelerate. So Bailey. A field goal attempt. He's already got one tonight of 20 yards, just like an extra point. It's up. And it's a two-score game. I know who I am, and I know what is best. Cause I dress how I live, and I live how I dress. But this life is one big go round, son. If you want advice, I'll give it. When you put that cowboy hat in your head, don't just wear it, live it. Texas never stops. Thanks to the financial support of Farm Credit, neither do the farmers and ranchers who call her home. Since the beginning, we've been helping rural Texas show the world what hard work can achieve. But the job is far from over. And as rural Texas grows further, we'll be there. Just as we have for 100 years. Bastrop may be a little off the beaten path, but if you're looking for a pair of boots, make the trip to the Texas Boot Company. Whether you're a full-on cowboy or just from the shins down, we've got the look you want and the team to fit you right. If you can't find it here, you can't find it anywhere. The Texas Boot Company. Classic comfort, legendary value. 20 straight by the Longhorns, the number seven team of the nation. They were trailing 10 to nothing at the half. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, and Jim Knox back in Austin. Story of the game, though, the Texas defense. A lot of people wondered, with so many question marks in the secondary, could they get it done against a team like TCU, a quality opponent? They gave up 397 yards last week to Arkansas State. Well, only 148 so far to the Horn Frogs for the Mountain West Conference on 48 snaps. Lawrence gets into it, and does he ever. Massey will stay about five, six yards into the end zone. So the Horn Frogs with a long field back at their own 20, trailing by 10. Well, November 18th, 1961, TCU here in Austin taking on the number one team of the nation at the time. Well, flea flicker, Horn Frogs needed it. A little lateral, Sonny Gibbs, Larry Thomas back to Gibbs. He will find Buddy Isles for the game's only score. Razzle dazzle. They upset the number one team of the nation, the Longhorns, six to nothing, back on November 18, 1961. And it's known as the cockroach game because Darrell Royal called TCU the cockroach. Said it's not so much what they eat and carry off, it's what they get into and mess up. <laughs> Quick out, it's complete. Rock's got it. Uh, thank you, David Barron, historian That's from right. the Houston Chronicle. <laughs> 9.32 to play. First first down of the half right there for TCU. They get it in one play. Now they moved the pocket back. And Colt McCoy got going once they started to roll him around. Change the launch point. If you're getting a serious pressure between the tackles, change the launch point. And 32, it's a first down for the Horn Frogs. Ton of time, two timeouts on the board. Here's the blitz. There it goes. And it was covered. Offensive lineman. Very alertly getting on top of it. And it may have been the center. Jared Norton was involved with the hit, as was uh, Roy was Miller. Montgomery, actually, who covered it up. And what a shot. Yeah, he got, he got hit by two. Yes. Watching the backside. Here, here he comes. You, know, he, you got some pressure coming from Jared Norton, and he hits him from the backside, and, and he gets smacked from the front side by Roy Miller. He's the meat of the sandwich, and that's a big old Longhorn sandwich right there. Roy Miller is 300 plus pounds. You feel that? On second and 15, Watts has to turn around. They track him down after a game of only a yard or two. 
Murray did a nice job in space of containing Watts, turning him back inside. That play was finalized by Jared Norton again. Now the heat you were talking about with Norton and Miller. Here comes Norton on the edge, boy. That's a I, shock to your system. Yeah, you just, I mean, that, that does. That, that shakes your whole skeletal system up. You do. You have to get your fillings checked. Make sure that they're all still intact. Well, your body just wasn't meant for jolts like that. That's like a car wreck. That's whiplash. Third and 13. Moving him out on the edge. Can Dalton get there? He spun around and really popped. McElroy. And McElroy gets him. He was slowed down. McElroy on the throttle. Right before McElroy applied the hit. Almost looked like they got him around the grill. Yeah, Dalton out of pocket, nowhere to go, has to tuck it, and he pays. Man, that's just pretty good contact. It was Houston that slowed him down. That's he got him around the shoulder pad. Roy just exploded. He was like a cobra. He, he basically coiled himself and recoiled. And now, clock moving. Only seven minutes left by the time and oh, put it on the wow. ground. Walsh did. Can pick it up and take it, and they will. Touchdown, Texas. It's Brandon Foster. So the pressure came on Derek Walsh, and he couldn't handle it. Well, he didn't. Foster didn't handle it the first time, but he got back up and picked it up the second time. He tried to he tried to pick it up and run, and couldn't quite control it on the first stab at it. And then he stayed with it. And that's not that bad of a snap. That's just mishandled. And there's, there's Foster. It's like, where is it? I know it's around here. He gets right back up, shows great athleticism, and picks it up a second time and takes it to the house. Each team has an unconventional score. TCU has a defensive touchdown. Texas has an off, uh, a special teams touchdown. 7 one to play. And it's gotten away from TCU, to say the least. Bailey with the chip shot, the extra point. We'll talk about a sudden change of events. 10 nothing TCU at the half. And 27 the other way for the Longhorns. Whatever Mac Brown said at halftime, he should bottle it and sell it. Massey and Rock Wade. And Lawrence gets into it again. And Massey will stay in the end zone. First down at the 20 for the Horn Frogs, a team with only one first down in the second half. Their offense did not support the defense too much in the second 30 minutes of play. Now two timeouts still on the board. Let's see what they can do. And by the way, Bob Steinfeld, our producer, and I got into town earlier this week. We were on a research and development mission. Yes. <laughs> and we, we want to thank Steve Vermeer, the GM and director of golf at the University of Texas Golf Club, as they give it to Christian up the middle. He battles for about five. But Steve Vermeer took us hole by hole. We had to do an investigative report. Right, right. And it took 18 holes to investigate and research. Right. And we want to thank him for it. So the really facility, first of all, is the layout. The course itself is beautiful, but the academic services, right. uh, everything they have for the golf teams here at the University of Texas, both the men and the women, uh, the practice tees, the video, the rooms that they have to help them as student athletes so they can get their work done over there in the training facility at the golf club. There's an edge. When you bring a kid in to recruit like that, as that time the quarterback Dalton took it on himself. Put down by Foster, he's got a first down. But I think that with that said, it requires one more trip to get the job completely done. You have to make sure about your research. <laughs> you have to you have to basically uh, edit it. <laughs> it's so beautiful overlooking Lake Austin. Lake Travers, you look at the Colorado River, it's it's pretty spectacular. These vistas up there in the hill country. Austin's not a bad place. Kind of summing things up. Dalton hits his man on the quick out. It can be a gain of about six. Now the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Live better with savings of up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com. It is all about the O. And it really hurts that right down the street is Rudy's Barbecue. That kills it. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> Dalton throwing. And Derek Moore stretches for it. So five and a half. As they stop it on another first down. Robert Killebrew 
Well, he's waiting there for more. So the Texas Longhorns, they've taken 14 of their last 15 at home. And Dwayne Akin, a co-defensive coordinator. Well, he's got to be pleased with what has developed. Massey, oh, look out. Wow. The pop applied by Eric Jackson and just happy to see the kid get up. Boy, I, you talk about focus. To hang onto that football after that kind of contact is phenomenal. Watch Jackson arrive with the ball and watch the helmet depart and, and still secure the football. Unbelievable effort by Donald Massey. I mean, the quarterback was good. The coverage was good. The receiver was unbelievable. Yeah, they get a quick score. A touchdown, that is. And an onside kick and a little delay over the middle all the way down to the 20. And they finally catch up with Irvin Dickerson, the senior. It was taken away, but he was already down to the 15. So a quick drive that started deep in their own territory back at the 20 for the Horn Frogs. They still have two timeouts on the board. Could make things interesting. Now, this, this game, it, the way the game was played, you hate to see TCU down by 17 points. It was a different game than that. They'll run Reagan. They're tied in in motion. Little double move, corner of the end zone, and overshoots. So wide open target, Jimmy Young. That's one of the few poorly thrown balls we've seen. From 5A, all state quarterback at KD High in Houston. Or can they? Quiet the crowd, get into the end zone, and then get an onside kick. That's what it's going to require. Put Christian to the backfield. Flag. Dead ball fouled against the offense. Legal procedure. You know, you, you look at Katie's, uh, or you, I should say, you look at uh, the numbers that Andy Dalton had at Katie High School. Over 3,500 yards, 52 touchdowns. And the thing that I like most about this young man is he seems to be unflappable. Don't like 11 penalties for 85 yards though against a team as good as Texas when you're playing at their place. You have to play a cleaner game than that. It'll be second and 15 back at the 20. They pick up the blitz from the opposite side. Now into the corner, oh. just out of the reach and deflected in fact on a diving attempt. As he went once again for Dickerson. A nice play by Marcus Griffin. Well, Mac Brown is 48-5 here at home. It's 36 and 4 against the state of Texas team. He's won 19 of his last 20. And Dalton's trying to change it down 17 points, but that's just tremendous coverage. And that's just an effort that's extraordinary right there by Brandon Foster, who's had himself a good football game here in the second half for sure. So now on third and 15. Dalton got rid of it in a hurry. Massey had it deflected away. Eric Jackson. And that time. That was a three score game. They're down by 17, 427 to play. But I think you need at least one touchdown before you can think about a field goal. And they will bring on the place kicker, Manfredini. So they're not going to waste the chance to at least get something on the board. As much as they gambled in the first half, it's kind of a surprise. Well, it's fourth and 15, though. It's a short field. That's tough. So it's real congested. It'll be a 37-yard attempt. And Before the snap, delay of game on the offense. Five yards. Now it's fourth and 20. <laughs> and when it, in, the, in the red zone, it, it, there's, there's tighter. I mean, as you saw with Dalton, the windows get a lot tighter. There's not as much uh, space to work with, and you can play zone defenses and, and really tighten things up. It's tough to execute on that, that many yards on fourth down. 42 yard attempt for Manfredini. Got a 20 yarder at the end of the first half. Another flat. Wow. How about it? How about a 47 yard drive? Kind of summarizes the second half for TCU. No 
Number 97 in the def on the defense caused a false start by the offense. That's a false, that's an offside penalty. Five yards, fourth down. Okay, Frank Ocamp. So now it's back to 15. You want to go for it? No, it's back, to, yeah, it's back to 15. <laughs> no, I still don't go for it. <laughs> 427 remaining. Colorado up on Arizona State early. 7 0 lead. Dennis Erickson is already making a major impact out there at Arizona State. Colorado feeding off the momentum of that overtime victory against Colorado State early on. That was quite a game on FSN last week. A mile high in Denver. So back to 37. Can we get it straight? It's on its way. And money in the bank with Chris Manfredini. 27 to 13 with a little more than four to play. And here comes the onside kick. Derek Combs and the Horn Frogs. The hands team out there over the far side. And big hop, what they wanted. And it's covered by Texas. It was there for the taking, wasn't it? Yep. Dallas, or Marcus Griffin, rather, comes up with it. Robert Henson shows his displeasure. Pleasure. This one, this one took on the second bounce. Is what right here built the high one. That's where you really have the opportunity and can't quite execute it. They and, overran the play. Yeah, Hunter overran it, and, and it was it, it was there for the taking. But it looked like Bart Johnson or Andy Burrell, one of those guys on the kick coverage team, overran it as well. So they've got it now. At the Horn Frogs, 43, trying to run it out. No timeouts left, of course, for Texas. They don't want to stop the clock. Two on the board for TCU. But again, Texas's defense. Uh, Jamal Charles still trying to get 100 yards against this incredible defensive unit. He gets three. Time now for our curious Kia Zero wireless call of the game. Only seven minutes left by the time and put it on the ground. Walsh did. Can pick it up and take it, and they will. Touchdown, Texas. It's Brandon Foster. Yeah, it was starting to fall apart before that. But Walsh felt the pressure coming. And it got away. It was not a bad snap. No, it was right in his mitts. Walsh could not control it. But now on second and seven, keep the clock moving. Charles, a yard to the 39. Yeah, there's been 21 consecutive games since anybody had 100 yards or more against this TCU defense. Charles with his 21st carry. He's up to 95 yards. And, and then coaches mentioned that he had when he had 27 carries last week against uh, Arkansas State that it was maybe a few too many and they wanted to cut him back to between 20, 22 carries in, in that range. And now uh, they successfully done that at this point. But Charles with the stinger, he said, you know what? I, I don't want out of this football game. Showed some toughness himself and came back in to finish it. Right now they've got him at 20 for 94. Thought it was his 21st. They'll get it up in time. Charles, he's got his 100-yard game and a lot more. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Wow. 39-yard scamper, 40 yards in that range. That's a quick hitter. Nice job by the boys up front. Texas offensive line, it was like the tail of two halves. First half, they struggled. Second half, they dominated. I mean, they did a great job up front. You give this guy a crease, boy, he can, he can take advantage. And again, you don't see too many times where TCU loses their gap control integrity, but every time they have, Charles has made them pay. Well, he did have 21. Now it's 22, and it's all over in Austin. 2.42 remaining in the game. Bailey for the point after. And we'll come right back. Texas has outscored TCU in the second half, 34 to 3. It must have been some kind of speech at halftime to back right in the staff. Oh, yeah. Massey, deep into the end zone, will stay right there. You know, Jacks links in the trenches. Uh, what about the block by Hills? Yeah, watch, watch Big Tony here. Just he, He's blocking down. He's taking it inside. He takes the angle. His responsibility is to absorb the middle linebacker, Jason Phillips. And he did. He eclipsed him. Big Tony's a big man. Got some, uh, some serious size going on there. Hunter Lawrence having a good time. The last three have gone into the end zone. 
And that's a weapon. When you're kicking it from the 30, they've moved it back to the 30 to bring the tuck or the return back into college football. And not the case. Dalton and a great grab by Moore. He goes down with the first down, stretching it out of the 33. Jim Knox, what's uh, the latest downstairs? All right, Joel, just wanted to let viewers know they may have noticed tonight a lot of the Longhorn players or coaches are wearing this blue wristband. This is in support of the running back coach, Ken Rucker. It says, we love you, Ruck, and stay strong, baby. See, Ken Rucker underwent prostate surgery last month. Everything went fine. He even talked to the team after practice on Thursday. He was up in the coach's press box tonight. He's expected back soon. They're also dedicating the season to Ken Rucker, their running back coach. Coach. Yeah, I guess when he uh, addressed the team on Thursday, Knox, he said Jamal Charles just jumped out of his seat. We see Colt McCoy showing the, the wristbands there, and he jumped out of his seat, just absolutely unbelievable emotion. And uh, that's 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 a great story. And back with the team. Uh, everybody's prayers have been answered. He's going to be back with the team in the next, what, two, three weeks? And that's what they're projecting. Dalton in trouble. And throws it away over the head of Derek Moore in the neighborhood with 218 to play. It's a it's a short week for Gary Patterson and his staff. They've got another game on Thursday, and they're on the road. It's at Air Force. So they've had three games to start the season in 13 days. How would you like that? You got Baylor, Texas, and then Air Force to start your conference schedule on Thursday. All right. And, and, and on top of that, Gary Patterson's son will be deployed to Iraq in December of this year. So Gary Patterson. Is, uh, is prideful of what his son is trying to do to, to ensure that we have the quality of life that we have. It'll be third and a little more than two. Big hole. Christians gets the first down across the midfield stripe. But I mentioned the game on Thursday. Then they get a bit of a break. SMU nine days later. Uh, the conference is everything, as we both know, Dave. You know, I, I think with the showing they had tonight, if he runs the conference goes 11 and 1, they're still BCS eligible. They'll be ranked high enough. That's a hole. And it's caught. <laughs> That's a takedown. Boy, did he get his he get his money's worth, old Bart Johnson. Well, Gary Patterson spoke with us about the conference schedule and the game on Thursday. I told the team two weeks ago before we even start for Baylor what my mindset was going to be after this ball game on Saturday night. Win or lose, they're going to have to be able to adjust. They're going to have to be able to forget it because we've had the win at Oklahoma. They'll get beat by SMU. We had the win against Texas Tech, come back and get beat, beat, beat by BYU and Utah. Uh, we've got to be able to change our mindset. We've got to get ourselves ready to play because the ultimate goal is to win the conference championship. Well, you would think that they'd at least allow them to play at home instead of having to travel to the Air Force on the short week on Thursday. Man. Tough turnaround. Dalton swings it. Christian has it. Takes a shot as he goes out of bounds. It's a gain of about four on the reception. You know, I, I think ultimately Texas or Coach Patterson's team down. You know, they're, they're bigger. They're just as athletic. They're bigger and stronger. And over time, takes a toll on it, I think. It kind of just warmed down a little bit. The Texas defense never gave an inch all night. Well, Mac Brown mentioned that the mistakes they made in the opener against Arkansas State, they were correctable. Derry's got the pick. Interception, Scott Derry. He's had a sensational game all yes. around from start to finish tonight. That's Dalton's uh, first pick of the game done a pretty good job of, of taking care of the football. Never saw Derry. He was trying to throw the shallow cross, and Derry just read Dalton's eyes. Derry said, I'm going to just jump right in front of the receiver and make the play. Dalton never did pick up 33 in the burnt arm. So it goes back to Texas to run out the clock from their own 43. And back to what I was mentioning with Mac Brown, he said everybody was upset about the first game. He said, hey, they stayed positive. The staff just worked. There was nothing negative. Right. Every error they saw was correctable. And it's a young squad. 20, the first 44 in the two deep, freshmen or sophomores. So it's only going to get better as they gain the experience of an eye with the carry. Well, there were things like Dallas Griffin snapping the ball to Colt McCoy when he wasn't looking, and they lost 20 yards on that. And they had that first and goal to the three. Four snaps sure. didn't get in. But they've replaced three guys on the offensive line that 
combined for almost 90 starts. And they replaced, they had to replace three in the secondary, and two of them were back-to-back -back Jim Thorpe Award winners. So those two position groups, the offensive line and the defensive backfield, that's where the biggest unity has to take place in terms of recognizing what's going on, communicating to each other so you're on the same page, and, and, and having the trust to do it, and they're building on that. Obaniah again. He'll take it to the midfield strike. Well, looking back on some of the key plays here's in the a, second half. Here's a momentum changer right here. It's 10-7 TCU. Colt McCoy, the ball is stripped by Phyllis, but they were reverse it after the replay. His knee was down. The ensuing kickoff after the 10-10 tie. Tight end Quentin Cunningham dives and fumbles the football. Colt McCoy takes advantage of the short field, takes it out of the one-yard line, and they finalize with the touchdown that gives them a 17-10 lead. So 10 points, like bam! And then here's the final interception. Uh, Gary steps in front of it. That's basically sealed the football game. Coffin nails on that play. Final snap of the game. And that'll do it. So looking down the road for the Longhorns and the one game that always stands out for Texas as they celebrate their second win of the year, the game at the Cotton Bowl, Oklahoma, the Red River Battle, October 6th, as they try to build for that one. That should be one heck of a football game. Oklahoma beats Miami big today. Sam Bradford shows that he's the real deal at quarterback for Oklahoma. But the way this game started, David, I would never believe that uh, Texas Longhorns would finish with 415 yards in total offense, but that was the case. And they win it decisively, 34 to 13 over a very good defensive squad from TCU. For Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us in Austin. It was a big win for the Longhorns, a bounce back win. Big 12 football on FSN.